welcome, welcome to another Let's Go So live show. And we are going to have a really great time tonight. So thank you all for coming. I'm going to take a peek at the comments really quick. Um, let me tell you a little bit about what we're going to be doing tonight. Uh, you are going to meet two of my very special friends. Um, I'm sure uh, some of you already know them because I know um, we a lot of us met all at the same time. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that story in a minute. But um, love having all of you here tonight. So if you are interested in learning more about uh, sewing, embroidery, and if you're ever curious about how someone starts sewing, especially someone that you might at first glance think, hmm, I wouldn't necessarily check the box for a sewing person. <laughs> I think you're going to be um, surprised and, uh, and really find some things interesting tonight. And another thing is really and truly, if you love to make gifts and do stitching for others, I think you're going to really be inspired tonight when you see some of my friends' um, uh, samples and different things. So I'm going to take a peek here and see who's here tonight before I introduce my guests. Oh, Diane is here. Um, uh, Professora is here again tonight. Shirley Janice from North Carolina is here. Uh, your sewing coach is here from Icy Kentucky. I know um, if there's anybody here tonight who has been experiencing this incredibly um, severe weather, um, I'm, I'm with you. My heart is with you and I feel for you. We didn't have it as bad as we thought here, but it nonetheless wasn't wasn't too much fun. And I, I feel for all of you. So stay safe and stay warm and cuddle up in front of your <laughs> computer or your, your um, iPad or your iPhone, whatever, or your phone, whatever you're watching device wise tonight and just um, warm yourself up with some good, good sewing stories. Um, Augustine's here from Michigan. Shirley's here from Alberta, Canada. Oh, you're, I know you're used to the, you're used to the cold, Shirley, but, um, nonetheless, I hope it warms up for you too. And Sheila's here. Christy's here. Rebecca's here. Um, Karen. Hi, Karen. Carol's here from Arizona. Carol, let us know if it's warm where you are. Shirley, yep, you're feeling the cold too. Glad to have you here. And Anne in Virginia, you got a little colder than you thought it was going to be. And, and then we've got Ann Ball here and Kathy and Star Raymond, Dolly, uh, Norma. I'm not sure if Steve is with you, Norma. I know it's Steve and Norma, but you'll have to let me know if you're, if you're both here. Um, Rhonda's here. Hey, Rhonda. Susan, Luella, Nancy, Trisha, Michelle, Penny. And Joyce Wright. Hey, Joyce. I know you're um, looking forward to seeing um, our friends tonight. Lynn Kilgore. Hey, Lynn. It's been a while. Janet. Jody's here. Linda. Amy. Um, you, you know, the uh, U-K-N-O-M-E-I. You're going to have to give me a phonetic spelling of your name there because I'm never quite sure how to say it. Yeah, Kathleen and Judith. Um, okay. Um, Norma says Steve is sitting next to her, but not watching. All right. Well, welcome, welcome, everybody. I'm loving to see in your comments and seeing where you're from. And, uh, uh, you know, just having you here tonight is really, really special. So I'm going to be introducing my guests. Let me go ahead and bring up just a little picture here so I can tell you a little bit more about them. Okay. So I know some of you already know. Uh, Debbie and Donald Strahan from Virginia Beach, Virginia. Uh, if you don't know them already, you're going to love meeting both of them. And if you read my little <laughs> my little tease email, I told you a little bit about both of them. Um, Don rides a Harley, fixes military jets in his day job, and in recent years found himself adding sewing and embroidery, heavy emphasis on the embroidery, I think you'll see, to his list of hobbies and talents, I should say. And um, Debbie is just one creative lady with a fantastic flair for decorating and a knack for making special gifts. Uh, the two of them create countless embroidered items for family and friends, 
and they make a few things for profit too. So if you're interested in a little bit of that as a side note, and in particular, if you're interested in um, learning more about what it's like to run and use a multi-needle machine, Don's going to tell us a little bit about that too. But um, teaching others is another gift that they both have offered the sewing world. So they are truly multi-talented sewing friends. And I feel very, very blessed to introduce you to my friends, Debbie and Don. Hey, Deb. Hey, Don. How's it Hi, going, Joanne? Joanne? Glad to have you here. Good Everybody here. say hello. I think, um, I don't know if you can see the comments at all, but if you, if you, um, if you saw them, you would see uh, some of your friends here for sure. <laughs> so I love to tell a story really quick of how we met and, um, you know, what all transpired after that. Um, I'd love to know if there was anybody here tonight watching that was actually at the same event where we met. So um, it goes back to 2016. And I was invited by Mr. Joe Strange, who is the owner of Tidewater Sew and Vac with multiple stores there on the Virginia, um, in the Virginia, what do we call it? Hampton Roads area? Hampton Roads, Roads, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, you know, very nice um, brother dealer with a lot going on there with sewing and embroidery. And he invited me to come and teach at a weekend retreat. I think that's so, yep, there's a sign up there proving that it actually happened. <laughs> so we all got together in a hotel and I'd love to know if some of you here and uh, would tell me in the chat if you've ever um, gone to an event like that. But it's all set up with different rooms and different classes in different rooms. And generally speaking, when you come in as a teacher, uh, the arranger there who at that time was um, our dear friend, um, Mary Beth Dodd, who some of you might have known as well, she set everything up and matched up helpers with teachers. So um, I was there, you know, setting up as best I could. But to tell you the truth, the room was a mess and it was getting late at night. And I called up Mary Beth and said, hey, Mary Beth, I'm getting a little desperate here because you told me I was going to have help. Where's my help? <laughs> but I guess everybody was busy doing every everything else. So she promised me, she said, no worries. Just show up in the morning. Everything will be fine. Well, naturally, I, you know, went to bed a little nervous, <laughs> especially because she told me I was going to have two gentlemen as my helpers in the class. Um, and I was used to having ladies in the class that I figured, um, you know, knew everything about the machines. <laughs> but lo and behold, I come in the next morning and everything in the room was absolutely positively perfect, like set up. I couldn't, it could not have been, you know, more perfect for the class that was to start uh, in a few minutes. And lo and behold, Donald Strahan walks in the room and we just, you know, we had a friendship like immediately. And I couldn't, couldn't stop thanking him for setting everything up because you, Don, were really the one responsible for having that classroom uh, look the way it did. And not only that, um, the, one of the things that impressed you, uh, impressed me so much about you was the fact that the ladies that came into that class were nervous. They were nervous because they were going to be working on a, um, a machine that was like a multi-needle, but it was a single needle. And we could talk about that too. But, you know, those machines are big and they're, they don't look like a regular sewing machine. And a lot of those ladies came in a little bit, a little bit nervous themselves and you calmed each and every one of them. And I always like to say that, you know, you really treated each one of them like they were your, your mother, your wife, your sister, your somebody that you cared about. And everybody left that room and left that class during that whole weekend. Very happy. So, and then of course, Debbie came in to see what was going on in the room. And then we, <laughs> I was afraid we just, to leave him there alone. Yeah, well, we had a bond immediately. And, um, uh, you, you know, Debbie, you kept me going that weekend because you kept bringing me Starbucks coffee oh, yeah, every trip I could make. <laughs> so that I could stay up. So, again, I have to thank uh, Tidewater So and Back. And thank you, Joe Strange, if you're watching or if you catch us on the replay for bringing us together. Because, you know what, once that meetup happened, 
Um, we never lost touch. We never lost contact. Um, we've only gotten to see each other in a couple of places, uh, you know, twice and since then. But most recently, if any of you watched the little video I did from uh, the beach retreat on the Outer Banks, um, I was invited by Deb and Don for that. So we just had a, had a great time. So really, um, you know, uh, does everybody, I see somebody saying they're having difficulties. Um, 60 of us can't have the wrong date or time. Um, hmm, I think we're good. I think we're good to go. Tell me if you, I see people saying hello. So I'm not sure what that is, but I always kind of like that. I catch that in the chat and I'm wondering what, what's going on. So let me know if you are having any kind of issues out there, but I think, I think everything's running pretty smooth here. So Debbie and Don both are in their sewing space right now. Yep. And that's a little bit of an interesting story in and of itself. <laughs> um, Patty is telling me, uh, Patty W is, says, okay, Rhonda's saying everything's okay. So all good. We're good. As okay. long as I know that we're, we're good. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about, um, well, like, first of all, I'd love to hear your own personal sewing story. So Debbie, how, how did you start sewing? When was your first experience with sewing? Um, the first experience I had was when I was in high school and I took it as a, as a class and I hated it. And, um, there is a very special friend of mine who I actually shared with her children when they were here a couple months back, I was not very good at it, but I tell you what, I am a great seam ripper. There is <laughs> That's an important thing. I cannot take out and Joyce Wright will attest to that after a gift she screwed up and I fixed. So I am a great <laughs> here tonight with us. So she can, she okay. can tell us. <laughs> but it was to make a shirt or it was something and I could not figure that out. And besides that, I just couldn't be bothered with doing that. Okay. But I had to take this class. So I would, I would run to my friend Gay and I would ask her, what am I supposed to do next? And so Gay would take it and she would say, oh, here, go fix this and I'll go sew it. So she would sew it for me. Oh, so you were the ripper and she was the stitcher. Uh -huh, absolutely. And that's how I got out of that class. That's, that is the true story from, from the Lord himself. So oh, after that, I never, I didn't pick up a thing ever again. My mother, on the other hand, is an excellent seamstress. Now she can sew clothes, drapes, this, that, and yeah. I just could not be bothered. She's a, she's a woman of multi-talents too. Yes. So I could see where you inherited a lot. I could not <laughs> be bothered to do that. And then, but I like to craft. And one day when Mary Beth used to have her own store, I was over there looking at something and she was telling me, you know, so I'd known her for years and um, I had worked at a radio station for a good portion uh, 15, 17 years. Mm -hmm. And when Mrs. Uh, Crump that I worked for passed away, it took me a little while to be able to go back in and work anywhere. I just had, it was tragic for me. And I went in and Mary Beth was like, you can sell and you can yeah. do this. So yeah. I think you just need to come work here, but you have to show me what you can sew and do. Really? <laughs> And what I did, I went back and I had made some Santa Clauses and towels and stuff. And I took it into her and I let her see it. And she said, okay, good. That's it. I just needed you to show it to me. So, I went, so to, I went to work for her and, um, you know, it, you, you really develop a different appreciation at that time uh, for yeah. things, how long it takes, um, how much time <clears throat> is invested in it. Oh yeah. And to find people, as Mary Beth used to say, quilt worthy. <laughs> I, I used to roll my eyes at her for saying that, quite frankly, because I used to think that was really rude <laughs> until you really see what she meant about yeah. what people appreciate. And after that, the sewing room became this and you, you, my mother still shakes her head to this day because she's sure that that is not her daughter from the person that had to have somebody help her get out of the class so she didn't fail it. Well, you know, Mary Beth Dodd, who unfortunately is is no longer um, here on earth with us, but um, she was the director of education for Tidewater yep. and she made an impact on so many lives. Sure she did. really and truly and still did. Does. And yeah. still does. Yep. Yeah. And every time we're together with anybody that knew her, yep. um, we all have great, great 
great memories and great stories. But I didn't even really realize that that she's the one that really got you back yeah. in and and back yep. um, going. Yep. Wow. She had me back, and and all I had ever sewn on was like Bernina machines. And so okay. she used to look at me like mm. and roll her eyes kind of like this way. And I was like, <laughs> well, hello. But then, you know, I began to, <clears throat> to sit down with a with a brother machine or baby lock. And you have to just learn. This does this on this machine. This does this on this machine. And, and it is a learning curve. I mean, yeah. there really is a learning curve. I still have some of my Bernina things. And but I love the way that this does this more. And so you just kind of have to develop what's right for you and what you are comfortable with, with learning. Yeah. But well, we definitely, definitely have people here tonight that, you know, are all over and yeah, we, over. you know, we, we, there's always something in common, even though the machines yeah. are different and they all yeah. have their, you know, their kind yeah. of special features um, in the end of it all, they all sew an so, embroider or sew right. or embroider or whatever, right. and just, you know, push a few different buttons and, and still, we're able to uh, reproduce, you know, the same, the same thing. So, yep. So Don, um, you and also, and I should say both of you, you know, like I said, we're teachers at, at Tidewater yeah. and, and still have some, some involvement there. So um, don't be surprised if you see them hanging around a Tidewater booth one of these days. <laughs> but um, Don, I know your story is like really interesting because you just like picked it up kind of in a snap and mm -hmm. didn't have that background that a lot of us have obviously from, from school and that kind of thing. So just tell us a little bit like how you got started and like what made you even think about doing it? Well, <clears throat> before we got married, we were hanging out and she was doing some embroidery on her Bernina. And, <laughs> and then, uh, I wanted to do something. So she'd let me play with her machine was on a towel and stuff, you know, Okay. And I had uh, rotator cuff surgery and she came and picked me up from uh, physical therapy one day. She goes, we got to go over to Tidewater. I got to show you something. I said, oh boy. <laughs> so she takes me over to Tidewater Sovac and I meet Mary Beth. So Mary Beth says, yeah, I got to show you something, Don. So I went in there. She showed me the persona and she was making a big B on this towel. Well, I said, what's it going to take to get this to my house? You know, how can I get by this and stuff? And she told me, and I took one home that day. And she told me before I left, she says, you go home. I'm not going to give you a lesson on this. You go home. You teach yourself how to run this machine. And after your physical therapy classes, you come and Teach yourself how to run the 10 needle and I'll hire you. Okay. So I went home that night and I asked her for the 10 needle uh, book. Uh huh. So I had mine and, and the 10 needle. Come find out they run similar, just one's got more stuff than the other. Yeah. So I taught myself how to run them. And then I showed her that I could do it and she hired me. So I was there to help sell and stuff like that. Then all of a sudden she goes, I've got another job for you. I said, oh, she goes, yeah, you're going to teach an embroidery club. Well, you know a good, a good self-learner is a good teacher. Yeah. yeah. For and she, sure. So she, she saw that. that. Yep. She put me into that club and I started teaching it. And then she says, I want you to teach to do some maintenance throughout the year that they can do at home without getting into it too deep and bring us a box of parts and say, well, I need this fixed. Yeah. So I started teaching a maintenance class. And so wherever she kept throwing at me about teaching something, I did. And, and, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that, about yep. that maintenance. But I, 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 want to, that. I want to bring up a couple comments because Anne, I have Anne up on the screen here. She mm -hmm. said she loves sewing stories. And Anne, tell me, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you actually have a persona machine. If I'm, you do. Yeah. Okay. I see her second comment here already. Yeah. So the persona, for those of you that don't know, is a brown machine right there. That's the baby right there. It's a single needle tubular machine. So when, when we talk about our, our machines that are sewing and embroidery combo machines, um, those are flatbed machines. But this machine is tubular, tubular <laughs> mm -hmm. meaning it, you know, the, the arm um, goes 
the opposite way of a free arm goes towards you. And so you can hoop things that are unhoopable a lot of times without, you know, taking them apart. We, I got a few, so, few samples that, of pictures you sent me. So we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. But I thought Ann had that machine. So it is a wonderful machine. And Shirley, okay. um, Shirley knew Mary Beth. So um, she met her when she moved back to Virginia sold her her first brother embroidery machine. Wow. Isn't that, that's amazing. Shirley, thank you for sharing that story. That is amazing. Yeah. Oh my. And Janice says she never even knew there was such a thing as a persona. It's oh. kind of one of those machines yeah. that, you know, sometimes the, the 10 needle machine kind of overshadows it because it's, you know, there's, they, they, they kind of, they look like they're from the same family, but they're not identical twins by any means. So well, there's a big brother. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And there is, you know, quite a difference in the, in the capability, but like I said, we'll mm -hmm. talk a little bit, a little bit more about that. And I had this um, up on the screen before, but Janice says she's been sewing and embroidery for over 30 years wow. and is still learning. And Janice, yes. you are absolutely yes. on target with that one because Every one of us, I think, could say that that same thing. In fact, yeah. I'm sure you would both agree with the statement that that's part of what makes this such a fun yeah, hobby, yeah. vocation, oh, yeah. avocation, just thing to do, because yeah, it yeah. really is um, just something that there's always something new coming out and always something that that we're learning. So let's see. We've got um, Alicia. She's got the uh, PR. 680w and she's loving that yeah teaching with the help of um uh youtube uh alicia is i'm hopefully i'm saying that correctly um you you got it i mean we all that's another thing we all learn from youtube um it's just you know a lot of times it's the place to place to go when you're looking for some kind of quirky answer that you haven't haven't seen before but we got lots of different um lots of different machines here Yep, everybody is welcome. And uh, Linda got her first one in 1993. That's that. I got my first one um, not too, you know, a little, a little sooner than that. But that those were the early days for sure. Definitely, definitely the early days. Yep. Do learn something new every day. And Janice says um, you learn by your mistakes, mistakes. as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is, um, that is without a doubt for sure. I've made some. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That is true. Um, and, uh, again, you're gonna have to tell me how you pronounce that. Um, you know, you know, me is how I'm looking at that, <laughs> but, um, not sure if that's, if that's correct, but, uh, uh, she loves listening to how we, how we all met. And, um, it really is something though, how, how sewing immediately brings people together. And again, if you if you've ever been to a you know a sewing retreat or uh, you know a, a class at a store or a sewing guild meeting or a quilt guild meeting, anything like that, um, it's so easy to make friends. It's it's right. just unbelievable because we obviously immediately have something in common. But besides that, I just think um, sewing people are some of the some of the best. <laughs> Absolutely, some of the best. All right. So that's, um, that is a unique story, Don, as far as like how, how you met, I think, um, you know, I would wonder like, okay, we didn't, we didn't tell a little bit about your other background from a little while back, but you were, tell us what you, what you did on those big blue planes. <laughs> blue <jets>. uh, <laughs> my blue angel years. I was, yeah. uh, I did, I did, uh, four years with the blues. And I did two years in the airframe shop, which is uh, structures and hydraulics and landing gear, flight controls, we work on them. And then two years of seven crew chief, which means I flew ahead of everybody one day ahead to set up the show site, make sure we have everything there. And um, like the gas we needed out at center point and, you know, the hotel rooms were all set. The cars were all set. And that was all part of my job. But the fun part about my job is I got to fly in the back seat. Wow. Which my pilots let me fly. So, you know, it was great. You know, I had my second pilot used to fall asleep while I'm flying to the show. And it was really good. I got a lot of experience. But um, we had a lot of good times doing that. It was my best uh, move in the Navy that I did for my 20 years. Best yeah. uh, squadron I was ever in. 
And we all thank you for your service, definitely. But so what I'm curious, I'm sure others are, and if anybody's uh, seen the Blue Angels, give us a give us a thumbs up. (laughs) You might have seen Don there somewhere if it was years ago. But um, Don, what do do you think at all your background with, you know, working on F-18s and all those things, you know, um, do you think that helped you? you know, from the technical aspect, because really uh, these machines, especially with the multi-needle ones, they are much more technical. You're not just, you know, sitting down and putting fabric under a presser foot and, you know, right. pressing the pedal to go. You're, you're, you know, you're setting things up on the screen. You're doing things, you know, you, that are definitely more technical. Do you feel like that background kind of, you know, helped you? Sure, because it taught me how to use what I call the manuals or the pubs. The pubs. Yeah, because right. you have to use the publications in order to make sure you get order the right parts, uh, put it in right, make sure how to troubleshoot it to make sure that's the part you need and um, to replace it properly. Everything like that, the torques that you need on the bolts. Uh, so, yeah, it, it definitely helped me to understand the books on the uh, on the machines here and how to read them and and how to troubleshoot the machines and everything. Yes. Wow. Wow. Well, we've definitely got some um, some Blue Angel fans and connections here. Um, Rhonda, um, her dad had a plane, so she grew up going to air shows. And um, Janice loves the Blue Angels. And so, Carolyn, yeah. how interesting. <laughs> um, her son was crew chief on the F-22. Mm-hmm. Wow. Is that and Anne's, um, mm-hmm. Anne's dad was in the Air Force. That is really really amazing. And um, Jenny's thanking you for your service. So yeah, I didn't even Thank think you. about that um, fact that, you know, what you call pubs, which I would never know what that means. Um, Me neither. But publications or publications. instruction manuals. Yeah. Um, you know, that's the other interesting thing. And I think it's so much fun having you both here today because, you know, not only do I have husband and wife, I've got, you know, Male and female. I've got female <laughs> stitcher, male stitcher, and you know, if you want to, you want to think like I think. Um, we don't, we don't think the same. So yeah. it's yeah. it must be somewhat interesting if you're helping each other with a project. I'm sure you, you know, get some time. That that can be very true because sometimes the way I see it, no, don't do it. No, you do it this way, and and he will be, yeah. But if you just did it like this, you'd you'd avoid doing that way. And, and that step would be taken out of there. So it, it really is very different to watch a dynamic um, of two different people that are of the opposite gender to see how they would solve that particular yep. Their minds problem. are different. Their minds are different. Definitely, definitely. Um, I got to bring up Lynn's comments. She grew up in the Air Force. I know cool. Lynn, Lynn's had a, had a really interesting background and saw the Thunderbirds and the Blue Angels regularly. So that yeah. is really interesting and then our friend carla is here um carla is your friend and my friend she's right mm-hmm. next to um oceana where um actually don that's that's where your your day job is for sure is. yeah and she also says um blue angels are the thing around here <laughs> yes, they yeah, are. There, that's the thing. <laughs> that is really wow. something but um i know you know in in my experience with um, teaching different different ladies at different times and and uh, men too, but the some of the ladies in particular, especially if they were married to engineers, and they would get uh, stuck on something. Mm-hmm. And I know an engineer and a mechanic isn't isn't necessarily the same, but you know you might have some some yeah. similarities. Their their you know their husband would come up with a whole other way of thinking, and mm-hmm. and I know some of us at first are like. No, that's not the way, you know, yeah. but, but I think too, and I'd love to hear in the chat if how everybody feels about this, but I think that a lot of us um, are like as females, I'll speak for myself and I'll speak for you too, Debbie, while I'm talking okay. here. Um, we tend to read the manuals less. less. <laughs> I'll just admit it. Yeah. We, I, you know, and maybe it's just because we feel instinctively we're going to, we're going to figure it out as we go along. Right. And, you know, it, but that, that is kind of interesting the way. But we, his first go-to is when I say, I don't, why won't this do blah, blah, blah. 
and hit the first word. So help me, our yep. out of his mouth are. Yep. Where's the pub? And I stop him in it. Oh, you mean the manual? And then <laughs> he will immediately stop and he goes for that before he does anything else. Yeah. I don't see it that way. Can't go wrong. Well, and, and sometimes, I mean, well, let's face it, some of us, I, again, I'd love to hear in the chat how everybody feels, but um, it's uh, it's not always easy to catch the drift in those no. manuals. Let's just yeah, put that bluntly. Not. You know, um, the, you know, a lot of times they're just, you know, maybe the translation is a little a little different because they do come a lot of times from Japanese and then translated right. into English mm -hmm. or wherever the machine's made. But um it, it sometimes I think it's not as as logical in the steps that we that we think not not to me yeah yeah but I'm going to tell a story on him okay, okay. I'd love to hear it this so is what I. this is what amazes me because <laughs> Don will always tell you I don't read well okay so I don't don't make me read okay fine I won't I'll tell I'll do it I don't do it like that. I, I can't, I don't see it that way. Well, all right. So it amazes me that with somebody who says, I don't read well because it, it doesn't compute like that. The first thing that you do is you go to get the manual. And so help me, he will get it and he will lay out there and he will sit there and you can see him going through it. And I'm like, well, then that's, that has to not be the truth because a person that wouldn't read well would not be the person who ran to get that the first thing. But he says it's how you become trained. Whether mm -hmm. you read well or not, the manual is how they're trained. And yeah. so I, after a while, I just guess I stopped and thought about it. Well, okay, because you do always figure it out in that aspect. So it, it's it's funny. We're getting some interesting comments. So I'm, I'm going to pull some up. Uh, the sewing coach says some concepts are lost in the translation. And oh, be that true. is absolutely true. Some things are just spelled <clears throat> wrong, too. But um uh, you know me, she says many times reading the manual is frustrating. <laughs> and I, you know, I concur. And I'm actually one of those, like, I do actually like reading the manuals only because I, <clears throat> for, for, for one big reason, I like to use the right terminology if I'm writing about it or speaking about it, just so that, you know, I'm kind of like, you know, really presenting it in the way that the, mm -hmm. that the manufacturer wanted me to present it. But um, it is um, difficult. And then, um, Patricia says she she she'll use the manual, but if there's a video instruction, right. she'll view that first. And if you do it at all, you know that some people are verbal, some people are <laughs> auto, you know, yeah. and some people are very very visual. And I think That's some of us do, are sure. a little bit of everything, mm -hmm. <laughs> for sure. Um, let's see. Uh, Deborah says she finds watching. YouTube, she'll be thinking of a better way that's being instructed. Ah, that's that's interesting, that's interesting. Deborah. Yeah, mm -hmm. that does happen. You know, you see and you go like, why did they do it that way? You know, yeah. <laughs> but sometimes, you know, just seeing something different is um, going to get your own mind thinking. And Carla says she needs training to find out how to do everything. She had a hard time finding what she needs in the manual. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. you look in the in the index sometimes and it's uh, it's just like. Uh, I don't know. I'm not finding the word that I'm that I'm I'm thinking of, you know. Sometimes it's, even searching for it doesn't give you the the right the right one. word. You know, if you search it under um Bobbin case or whatever you're trying to do, it, yeah. You don't exactly. Find it from either. Exactly. And of course now a lot, you know, um, I know we had somebody here who said something about having the luminaire. I'll try to pull that one back up, but um <laughs> with the new some of the new machines and uh, you know, the brother luminaire in particular. Uh, there is no, there is no manual, is it? manual. Now you actually can access that mm -hmm. online if you want to, and you can print it yourself or save it to a, a portable device and, and have it printed. But oh. they've put the manual right in the screen of the machine. And, you know, you have videos in the, in the, uh, screen too. You can go to a video and yeah, watch how to do it. certain things. Yep, but exactly. it's not real detailed. I mean, yeah. If it was right. something a little more complicated, help. yeah, you're right. That's a that's a really good, um, a really really good reminder. And then, um, yeah, please um, bring up your questions if you have it. And uh, Kathy says it's the Navy way, or it was to read the manual. Okay, so there we have another um, another clue as to why <laughs> Don does yeah. what he does. Yep. So that's what uh, Merhavi says. He'll read it for me, for her to highlight the important things and then explain it. Yeah. It's all about the explanation for sure. And yes, Kathleen yes. says the manual in the Luminaire is built in, but 
um, she had to download the same thing online. Yeah. And like you said, Don, the videos that are there um, on most of the newer machines, for sure, they're just like little kind of brief, brief <coughs> clips. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's kind of sometimes it's a little hard to to coordinate all that. But get you on track, though. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. And Lorraine. Hi, Lorraine. Thank you for for being here on the live today, um, which I should remind everybody. Let me bring up this screen. If you um, are watching and if you are enjoying this video and all of the rest of them where I bring uh, sewing enthusiasts on so that they can share their own sto sewing stories and give us all some tips and tricks, um, be sure to hit the like um, and subscribe if you haven't. And if you have subscribed, uh, if you hit the bell for notifications, you'll know every time a new video is, um, is uh, goes live here or is uploaded here. So I really, really appreciate that from, from everybody for sure. All right. So, you know, you guys have made so many beautiful, beautiful things. I think we should get right into showing some of them. What do you think? Want to do that? All right. Good. I've got some pictures that you sent me. So I'm going to go ahead and bring those up. Give me one second here. Alrighty. So I think we should see uh, those beautiful towels you did, Debbie. That well, the um there's a story behind the, the sugar cookie one is ones that my mom has made. And um, my my sons and their dad um, have loved them forever. And so this is one of the things where um, it, it's it, it's up here for her, but it's not on a on a piece of paper mm -hmm. in, in her mind. So we were trying to to think about it. And and Dan um, has always loved them. And so this year he had uh, lost his mom and my son's other grandmother. And it was kind of one of those things about, wow, you just begin to see how short time is and certain things. And so my mom decided, okay, well, I'll just write them down. Well, when we were back at another show, um, All About Blanks, had those recipe um, cloth pieces and I happened to see them at her booth. And so I picked up a pack of them and she said, oh, you know, those are, they're permanent. All you have to do is have this pin, write your recipe out. And she said, and they're permanent on there. Huh. Really? So I, I have never seen those. I wonder if anybody else here has ever, ever seen those. I, I've certainly oh, seen yeah. recipes that you can embroider on towels but yeah. never a patch like that that yeah. you could fill out and and do yourself. So I'm just going to mention again that that's um, from all, all A L L about A B O U T blanks B L A N K S. And I think their website is just allaboutblanks.com. Um, but they are one of those things that you see if you go to a big sewing show because that's where you'll see all the things that they that they make, which are blanks ready for you to embroider or embellish, right? They were. Yep. And the towel, um, I got, I think I got them from their booth too, or they are the Dunrovin towels um, mm -hmm. as well. One or the other, she sells both. But anyway, um, the packet that had those recipes in it, I had mom sit and write it down. And um, for Christmas um, yesterday or day before yesterday, when my kids went over there, we had it fixed for her. Mom says, I'm, I want to sew this on there. And um, so mom sewed the the little patch on. And I'm sorry. I, I just couldn't stand it to go with just the recipe on yeah. it. Yeah. So I was hurrying and I was trying to think about what in the world could we do really quick. And I had that prairie pointer uh, pattern that you could buy it in the big one with the metal piece or you could buy the little slim one. That oh, so you actually it. had a template so that you could there fold was a template. the... Yeah, fabric and form the prairie points. Okay, yep. you could do that, or you can cut them four by four, and then the little pattern I had showed you what to do. So I was in here quickly cutting all these little four by four pieces, and I was folding them and I was ironing them, and I come back, run back in, and so I stitched them across the bottom. And mom comes in and she's like, "You don't have time to be doing that." Well, it'll be all right. And so I'd get them on there, and then I'm like, "But you know what? You really need to put the rickrack on because I'm done now." 
<laughs> and so they did it have a raw edge at the top there and then raw, you just covered it, it. A raw edge yep if you look right above the black of the prairie bank okay. with that wide um rick rack wasn't on there it would just be a raw edge it's a four by four piece of fabric mm -hmm. folded in half and then you fold the corners in just yep yep I, i'd love to know how many of you here have actually made um I uh, love them. Fairy points. Yeah. I, they're just a quick and they just add a lot. And so then I stitched them across the bottom, got the um, cream colored rickrack and mom sat out here and stitched that part on it. We yeah. rolled it up and we sent it over there. So at least now he always has it. And, um, I, you know, it was funny after you mentioned that, wow, that would have been really cool to have digitized to that. Yeah, well, actually, I was uh, I clicked on the wrong comment, but um, Janice was asking if that recipe was embroidered. Nope. No, Janice, it's actually um, written with a, a a special pen. I'm thinking it might have been like um, uh, the Pigma markers. It must. It, she so sold it like sold that it separately beside the uh, her little display with those yeah. recipe cards. That you do have to look for special pens that not only are they permanent ink. Yeah, but they're actually meant for writing on fabric because right. some like if you just take like a regular Sharpie marker, even if it's the real fine point, mm -hmm. they tend to bleed. Yeah, they bleed on the fabric. So make sure that you find out, you know, what what the special um, uh, ink, you know, pen actually is for that. But you certainly could embroider that. In fact, when yeah. you were telling me a little bit about it, um, you know, when I was asking you about what kind of gifts you were making and that kind of thing. Um, and I thought. Well, you know, software would be a really great way sure. to actually digitize a recipe. And I've, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm checking to see if anybody here has ever done that, but I've certainly had some friends that have done that. And it, it really, with the specialty small fonts, you yeah. can, you can really do that um, really well. So you made me think I'm going to do that as a future um, tutorial and show how to do that with uh, lettering software. So. Especially with that micro, 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 um, thread. micro thread from mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that it's made 60 for weight or 80 weight, even the 80 weight it's thread. Made, yeah. It's yeah. made for, it's made made for, for that. Uh, embroidering. Definitely. Words. Words like that. And um, Rhonda, she was kind enough to post uh, the actual link. Oh, there, you go. To, there it is. Um, the All About Blank's uh, recipe patches. Yeah. Oh, um, family recipes are just something so special and really are something that, that you want to give so that somebody else can inherit it, yeah. literally. Yeah. And um, Anne has a recipe with uh, gingerbread. And if you haven't done this already, this is a great, great, great idea. Um, I like the idea of even, um, you know, just doing it quick like this. So <laughs> Janice says, gorgeous penmanship, impressive. Um, <laughs> did your mom write that? Did, did June I, write that in her own handwriting? Yeah. And you know what? My mom had developed tremors. And so she has, she has struggled with the... You know, that's just not her, but yeah. um, she actually, it was on a hap happened to be a relatively good day. And she did, um, she did manage to get that written. Oh, now, the only problem that. is on the back of that, she didn't realize that what we were going to do with it. And so she flipped it over and she was finishing writing it. And I went back in there and I'm like, um, you can't do that, mom. It, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> <laughs> so I just finished that last little bottom line is is my writing, but the other is, is my mom's penmanship. Yeah. Well, it's neat too. Cause you were able to squeeze it all onto that one. <laughs> that was <laughs> label. Squeeze is the um, operative word there. Yeah. Um, Penny loved the, uh, the Prairie points. Um, she's done it um, in a quilt with um, fall fabrics and used it for one of oh, Mary yeah. Beth's so fun. fundraisers that we had. Yeah. And April, um, I love, I love reading oh, what wow. everybody's, what everybody's um, thinking here, but um, April says she prefers those to time consuming, um, digitizing, but Mary Ann, I think Mary Ann, um, has an idea for, oh, you've already done it. Mary Ann, she's embroidered wow. a recipe for her lasagna and framed it. Now that's another that's great idea. idea. And actually, yeah. if you wanted to, if you, you could even stitch it on a tea towel, you know, so if it had a, a you know, a blank area and then frame the tea towel. Frame the tea towel. Because then it, it just has that kind of homespun look. And yes, Janice, it is a good idea for you to get um to get started. And yeah, she better also, start today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you did it the night before, didn't you? Or the yeah, morning of <laughs> and Janice, you're right, since um 
uh, Debbie's mom, uh, June, another dear friend. Um, uh, since she wrote it, it makes it even more priceless. Absolutely. And April's actually used um, those Prairie Point templates yeah. too. I did not know that um, there was such a thing. So it's a metal piece in a shape. It is the, it's the bomb. I mean, it just makes it so easy for you to get the exact real precise point to them. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> definitely. Oh, we've got so many friends here from so many places. Let me just bring this one up really quick. Um, April is here uh, catching it live from Australia. Wow. So, hey, April, it's always good to see you. And thank you so much for um, taking the time, whatever time it is there, um, to be with us. So, and Lorraine says, thank you for the live today. Thank you, Lorraine. We really appreciate having you here. Um, I'm not sure if I brought this one up before, but um, Anne said technology is always changing for the better. And that that is really true. We just, mm -hmm. we find, um, you know, more and more all the time. Um, the things that, you know, and again, I go back to software because that is something I like to use when I need to do something a little, a little extra, but, um, even what's built in the machines is really pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, Denise says that is awesome. And I know you had some friends here, um, trying to find, I think, um, I think John is here. Um, oh. um, I have to find his his um, comment if I can, but that'll take me a, a couple minutes to, to look for that. Let's go ahead and we'll go on to the, to the next um, picture here, which again, more gifts. And Don, I think you're responsible for at least some of this, maybe all of it. Yes. No, no? There's stuff in the pillow. That's it. That's oh, the okay. <laughs> he did. That's my granddaughter. <laughs> yeah. What a precious picture. We did the baskets. We had just gotten those. Um, one of the sites that we belong to. I got those two baskets oh, I for I see those. Okay. Um, uh, Halloween. We Halloween. got them for Halloween. And we had them. Did we use the new wide hoop? We didn't use the wide hoop for that one, right? Yeah, we did. We did. We used the new wide hoop. Um, the hat hoop with the big plate, um, 14 inches, yeah, to sew oh, it and hey, so that do the, the little buckets. Hey, that's a great <laughs> yeah. idea. We used them for um, trick or treat, okay. And, we, and the Jenna Pilla is a Kimberbell, um, because I love Kimberbell. Um, is there you had to cut all of their little you know letters out and all, so that was a, a little gift for her that I did. Um, from that. So that's not embroidered. Okay. Those are just, oh, interesting. That's embroidered by me using it with the satin stitch just on a machine. Okay. Well that, you know, that's really great to see because I know we have a lot of, um, a lot of friends here that, that have embroidery capability, obviously, but not everybody does or not everybody, maybe, maybe they're new to it. Maybe they haven't used it much, but you know, what you did there with those letters, that's another even though I love to do embroidery and you can embroider applique letters, right. you know, but just cutting them out, putting fusible backing on it, and then even just zigzagging around that. Okay. And once they're fused down, they're going to stay in place. And yeah. they have that really wonderful homespun look too. Yeah. When they're just zigzag like that. I know, you know, those of us that love embroidery, um, there are some embroidery designs that are made, to look more homespun, but most of them are pretty well finished, you know, and, and it, it does kind of, you know, sometimes take away from that, from that look when you, when you want to have a look that's, um, you know, very, very kind of uh, handcrafted look, let's say. I think it just has to be your style. Like sometimes when you can't get them to do a satin stitch, you know, around it because it's not digitized in, that's a great alternative, though. It, it absolutely, absolutely, and the it you know it's really fun to play with those colors too, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, I did find your friend John. There hey, John. <laughs> I got to meet John on my last trip down to um, Virginia Beach, and yeah, I bet uh, I bet uh, John has seen some uh, great <laughs> things that you have both made for sure. Oh yeah. Well, his his. Um, his gift was to his sister uh, this year. His he lost um, both his parents in a shorter time frame, and he wanted to do something special for his sister. So 
he was trying to think of it and we were trying to find some of his dad's shirts and we were oh. going to cut them because we turned around to um do the embroidery applique again of uh his sister's initials on um. the blanket with the fabric and we had all of it so i we tried but the only thing that you could really come up with was a t-shirt one and it just was not gonna okay. it just wasn't gonna adhere to that so we kind of said okay if you can find another shirt of your dad's we'll cut your dad's shirt and we'll use your dad's shirt as the fabric but we couldn't seem to come up with something that looked for that type of blanket and so i said i tell you what so he was in the other day and he was going through the sewing room and Aunt Debbie, I, I don't care. <laughs> so, <laughs> I said, okay, let's out. <laughs> oh, well, sometimes it takes a little bit of time for, for the idea to really like yeah, you know it does. click or or find the right the right combination. Right. Sure. He's yeah. a Harley rider too. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, and that's and that's actually probably another um funny story. Let, let's oh. just um talk for just a minute because uh I know at one time when I first met you, you guys were collecting those um row by row uh, row by row row by row so i'd love yeah. i'd love to know here in the chat if you remember row by row but that was a big thing at quilt shops yeah and different states had their own had their own uh looked like a license plate but we not we have people, all of ours over there yeah people were making quilts out of it and all that Absolutely. but i remember don telling me how he'd ride up right up to the you know uh a quilt shop on his harley and uh, they'd look probably look it out, peek it out the window before you even came in. And then when you came in wearing your vest and your patches, uh, they probably hit you with this line. So what are you here to buy your wife, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, forget it. She can come shopping herself. I'm looking for blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yep. Right. yep. Yep. No, we got some great, um, great comments here. Let me bring um, a couple up here. So Marianne says, yeah, if you have BES4, you can um, send it to Scan and Cut yeah. and save it and 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 make it into an applique and cut your pieces that way. Yep. You are absolutely right, Marianne. Well, I love yep. seeing everybody else's um, ideas here. And Patricia, she remembers row by row. Yep. We could do a whole, whole story just on those because they were really... Oh, yeah. um, they were really, really interesting. And uh, Jody says she has some of her great grandmother's recipes. She'd love to say them that way. Yeah. yeah. Again, I, I think that that towel with the patch on it is just, you know, it's sometimes um, done is better than perfect. And maybe you've got grandiose ideas to digitize the handwriting and, you know, whatever. But if you can just do it <laughs> and get it, get it done, I think that was makes a really, really quick way to do yeah, it. Yeah, even if it's mm -hmm. an hour before you gotta have it ready, don't worry about <laughs> it. Yeah. And you know what? Um, your sewing coach, oh, um, she's got a, a an fabric. excellent idea. Yeah. Um, just use um the special fabric that's made to be washable and made to be stitchable, and um, you know, print your recipe right on there, cut it up and stitch it on. Yep, that is a great idea. And then you might want to add prairie points and rickrack around it as well. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Yep. And Marianne, uh, she actually made several quilts with the the row by row and oh Marianne you collected as far as Hawaii yeah that is amazing wow and Jody has um lots of them she started collecting them in the states she traveled in too yeah that is really neat that is really neat and Anne has another um really good point she said uh the simply applique software which is another <laughs> um brother product and most of you know I'm a brother ambassador and those are the machines that I use and the software I use but you can uh definitely use the software to turn designs into applique. So, yeah. mm -hmm. so many, so many possibilities. All right, Don, I know we've got some things that you've made here though. So let me go to the next one. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we so, <clears throat> go ahead. I was just going to, I was just going to ask you, so, you know, do you get requests from your fellow mechanic friends, from your Navy pals, from your biker pals. Sure do. Um, tell us some of the things that that you you know you do because of your connections with um, all the people that you know. Well, this uh, first blanket here, the newest little USS Stout Sailor. We had a um, one of our female friends was on board the ship, and her husband was part of the 
group back home, you know, it wasn't the ladies club anymore because you got husbands there. Yeah. But, um, so they wanted, they had several, what, eight or 10 yeah. babies born yeah. while the father or the mother was, well, not while the mother was gone, but by the, <laughs> when the father was gone. And so she wrote back and said, hey, can we get some blankets made up? So he took it to the group and the group liked it. And they uh, contacted me, and uh, Debbie and I, to see if we could make those up. So we got the design from, you know, they told us what they wanted and we found the design and we made it up and we sent them a sample and they said they liked it. So they give us the blankets and we made them. And when the fathers got off the boat, they had the yeah. baby wrapped in this yeah. uh, blanket. Oh, how special. Yeah. And then the next one, one of my Navy friends that, uh, of course he wasn't in the Navy anymore, but because uh, we were still working together outside the Navy, his daughter was uh, graduating from high school and was going to the Navy. So on her sash, he wanted the Navy put on there. I wow. said, yeah, I can do it. So I brought it home and we set it up and did it for him and he loved it. She wore it for graduation, walking, for graduation, walking across the stage. Oh my, it's, you know, that is the beauty of being able to, um, create something uh, is, is to personalize it like, like that. Mm -hmm. too. And, and, you know, where would you be able to ever purchase something like that? I know, you know, all of right. our friends here at one time or another have made something totally unique and totally, totally special. Yes, Denise, that is really, really sweet. Janice, for sure. Absolutely. It, um, so let's see what the next one is here. Ah, okay. Now we're getting into some adult things and some of the things that, that um don i think you would say these are uh a lot of times the things that make you really glad you have the multi-needle machine the 10 needle machine yes for two reasons i'm gonna say and then you tell me a little bit more about it but uh that tiger uh i don't know how many thread changes were there but i'm yeah. sure it was more than two or three <laughs> yes there was quite a few but that was a, that was a fun thing to do um, the same day that we did that, uh, I put a, um, what was wolf. It? A, a wolf. wolf, a wolf head on the back of another blue jean jacket. Oh, wow. one, of the, one of the, um, ladies that used to come to Taiwan Sovac a lot, wanted these put on the back of her jackets. And so we said, sure, we can do it for you. And, uh, I used my 10 needle. Okay. But I, I mean, would it do it on the persona? Yeah, but that's a lot of changing and tying and yeah. pulling through and you know all that for the uh thread changes uh color changes but on the 10 needle it's set up real nice and um i think i got it done with all 10 just 10 10 colors okay. if I remember correctly well the other interesting and, thing and with the 10 needle is is sometimes those colors are layered but mm -hmm. it's using the same color again later on right. and the machine remembers that you have that color on there. Yep. So yeah. it, it just says, Oh, okay. You need to do gray again. All right. Well, we already got yeah. gray on spool number three. We can take care of that for you. Right. Where the single needle, you'd be changing it every single every time. Yeah. Like I said, it was probably about 10 colors, but it actually ended up being 12 to 15 because like you said, we use the same color several different times. Yeah. Um, the lady who who this was for was um, Glenna Maynard. She we actually sold her her, her luminaire, I believe it was when the luminaire yeah. came out. Okay, she had a had a dream machine, and she had gotten the design from. She had a ten needle. Also. She had a ten needle also. That's right, and she had a um the design from Embroidery Library, and she loved them. But you know, sometimes when you have all that, and you just get overwhelmed with whichever one, and finally she was like. I, I don't want to mess with it anymore. Will, will you guys just do it? Absolutely, we will. So that particular design was on one of her jackets. I think it was for her daughter, if I remember correctly. And then the other denim jacket was mm -hmm. the light denim jacket that yeah. had the wolf on it with the white gray. It was really, that, that those two designs stitch out beautiful when they're yeah. through. So was that Embroidery Library? Is those that where the design came from? Library, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. They're, um, you know, they do, they do a great job. Carla actually says she's got, um, something that you stitched, a uh, seashell and gave it to her at, uh, at one of the shows. So that's yeah. pretty neat to yeah. have, have a memory like that for sure. Um, yeah. And, and, Anne, I had brought this comment up. Um, Anne said, uh, Oh, that was, 
That was Jana saying good night to us all. <laughs> but Ann said denim is great for embroidery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I love it's doing awesome. denim. I love doing jean jackets. But I bet that backpack was a little more of a challenge, right? It was it was a little challenge, but we we come through that one. But we did do. I didn't send you a picture of them. We had a cheerleading squad from yeah. Hickory, wasn't it? Uh, somewhere out somewhere there. out in Chesapeake. And I um, <clears throat> they all had these red uh, bags that the zipper was on the top. Okay, and they always had problems finding their own bags because they'd have to look down at the bottom or on the side or whatever. So they wanted their names embroidered on the top of them. There was about 10 or 12 of them. And so we took that challenge on and did that. And they loved it because yeah. all they had to do, they'd have their bags lined up in a row. They'd walk by, see their name, pick the bag up and go. They okay. didn't have to work for it. Yeah. So we've done all kinds of stuff like that. Well, that, own bags. The uh, backpack, yes, it was a challenge. Almost as well as the challenge of the Virginia Tech jacket that we left for you to do. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did a little bit of stitching while I was there with you. Um, but uh, Jody wanted to know how long it took to stitch the tiger on the multi needle. It was over an hour, hour and a half. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was, it was a few minutes. And um, Jody also said um, she needs a multi needle. Yes, she <laughs> so does. Not, what? What? I mean, what do you? What are your? If you could think of like maybe like three main things or three of your favorite things about stitching on the multi-needle as opposed to on a single needle machine. What would I don't that have be? to change the thread as much because I've got 10 or the six needle is great too, but you have, like on that tiger, you have to change the yeah. threads <laughs> quite a bit there. But um, the 10 needle is so versatile about that because you, you have 10 threads, you set them all up. And then sometimes if there's like three or four other colors afterwards, all you have to do is change three or four of them. You pull your time together, pull them through. The yep, knot will not through go like through the finger. needle, right? You mm -hmm. just have to remember the knot will not go through the needle. And all you have to do after you pull it through is um, re, uh, uh, what is that? <laughs> no, <laughs> thread the needle. <laughs> yeah, and it's got an automatic needle thread. That helps a lot. You just have to hook it up and let it, and uh, thread the needle. And you're off and running again. Plus the hoop sizes. She and said you want to three sizes things, are the bigger. hoop sizes are bigger. A lot bigger. So I like that. Yeah. And then um, do you find yourself like like something like this backpack? Were you able to actually hoop that in the hoop? Or do you sometimes find yourself using like the sticky stabilizer or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, we use that sticky stabilizer on that. I that one was that one. And we okay. probably use the, uh, if I remember correctly, we because you don't want the hoop marks on it neither. But um, it's harder to get it into the uh machine sometimes so i believe we use the uh snap hoop, snap hoop okay aha uh -huh. very good good point because that are the dirty ones i can't remember which one that one was done on i'm going to tell you that i think it was done on a dirty hoop it could have been because okay. there, you could put it on this the sticky mm -hmm. and then we had if i if i remember right we had little teeny you know the little clip mm -hmm. from clover those little clip uh -huh. things I think yeah. we had it clipped and taped because, you know, sometimes that stuff moves. It yeah. Does. Just that little extra, extra security. <laughs> so, security mm -hmm. that you can get. Sometimes yeah. You use straight pins. Yeah, sometimes I've used straight pins to hold it. How'd yeah. Mm -hmm. there, where there's a will, there's a way, right? Yeah. It comes you figure to get it out. <laughs> but it is true that, you know, with the, with the tubular machines, there are, more options, especially with a multi needle tubular right. machine, a lot more. Um, a lot there are more. more hoop options available, yeah. and yeah, mm -hmm. Durkey. I love Durkey. Um, Durkey makes some great, great hoops. I've just had experience of working with some of the the new ones that actually come out came out for the um, the flatbed uh, single needle machine. So that's that's a topic for another day. But um, wow. there's just uh, there are like a lot of different ways. So if you have a if you're here tonight and you have a question. Um, to ask, uh, get it in now because we're going to be wrapping up this show pretty soon. Um, let's see what April said. Uh, the free arm of the multi needle machine and the additional support tables are great. Yeah, the yeah, I'm, I'm sure Don, you would say like you know Absolutely. you're going to think of ten more things that you wish you would have been able to say you loved about it when <laughs> when we. Well, get the hat hoops are great because they're round. Yeah. Instead of the flat hat hoops, you got it's it's circular and it keeps your hat in shape. So I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't think I pasted in any pictures of hats. Do you have one there to, to you want to show? Uh, I think you might recognize this one. Yeah, you can get that real close to the camera. 
Yeah. So me and you. Me and you. OBX. OBX 2022. It just happened to rhyme. We were there on our on our retreat. Um, and uh, the, this uh, is made with the big, new the fingers. new, the new hoop. The 14 inch. For their ear to ear, we call that, right? Yeah. 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 Ear to ear. Yeah. So Christy has a great question. And actually she's, <sighs> she's taking the words out of my mouth because that was going to be the next thing I was going to ask you having you here tonight, Don. What, um, you know, how, how does maintenance and repairs work? And first of all, if you could give us maybe some tips, because I know you've had training on that to <clears> take <throat> care of your um, machine. So you have less trips to, <laughs> to, yeah. to service, but how does that work? Um, Probably most of the time you'd like to just take your machine in there because they're so heavy. You don't want to move the molten needles that much, but I'll take them anywhere I can because I love them. But um, what you want to do is try and keep your machine out of the shop. So to do that, except for your yearly maintenance and cleaning, right. um, you want to make sure that you oil your hook area like it tells you to. Okay. Like and when they say drop, they mean just a drop. Some people take when I when I sell sold the multi needles, it always come with that bottle of oil. Mm -hmm. and I told the people take and throw it away. Okay. Take the other oil because they sell the little black bottles of oil. It's got the little hose that goes to it. Okay. And you can get one drop of oil out of that because you can get too much oil on it and you start sewing and it gets on your material. Now yep. you've got an oil smudge on your on your fabric and yeah. you don't want. So and one drop of oil it. there, yep. you know, and it oh. says every time you use it. But I think every five to ten hours is sufficient. Yeah. Because if you keep doing it every day and you're only using it for 15, 20 minutes, now you're over oil and it's going to build up and you don't want that. That's a really good point because even though that message comes up every time you turn the machine mm -hmm. on, it's kind of like the machine is assuming that you had it on all day and right. you've been sewing all day, you know, embroidering all day. Yeah. So, yeah. So about every, every, you know, five to 10 hours, whichever one you feel comfortable, uh, keep it clean down in that area. Take your um, needle uh, plate off. Make sure you, you brush that out and clean that out real good. Uh, your your tensions, make sure you take every now and then take the thread off them and, and uh, make sure they're clean and, and uh, ready for your thread. Because sometimes you just wrap it around your tensioner and sometimes the dust will get up in there and no. it'll start yeah. putting more tension on there that you don't need. So you want to keep it, keep your machine clean that way. Um, Keep the dust off the top of it if you can. It's hard, I know, because room's got dust in it. But uh, if you do those and keep the uh, the needles where you need to uh, your oil them, you need to keep those the springs and stuff inside there. <laughs> keep those oiled, and uh, every every several hours change your needles. Even though it's ten needles, change them because okay. they get dull, and they're gonna start giving you some. Uh, breakage or you'll get uh fraying stuff like that you'll need that for your uh you change your needles and you won't get as much of it yeah great great advice um let's see um alicia says she has so much to learn regarding hoops huh that's a, again another topic for another oh, day yeah. there that, We're that, still like, about yeah, really, too. Our whole, yeah our whole wall has the hoops and yeah, it, it's, it's, it's endless that. it's absolutely it endless yeah. but um oh, sure. uh, jenny wanted to know um how you keep dust on the 10 needle that's a really great question yes, like as far because we don't have the lid that goes over it like we do on our regular we do have they do have, they covers. Do have a cover they um, do Yes, they do make yeah, covers right down here. Yeah. My, it, it doesn't it doesn't say brother doesn't when say I brother. bought it. it didn't yeah, I know what you have because you know what I've thought of actually lock. getting one of those it's just because lock. I think it's the only person that makes them. Is that yep. one? I've never seen anyone, yeah. not even on other sites, that had it. So when we had the opportunity to buy it, we did, and especially with being near with the, the window, mm -hmm. we do try to keep it covered to keep the dust out. Or of you it. can make your own cover. Yeah, actually, I've I've thought I've thought about doing that. I'm actually working on a project where I'm doing um, a cover just for like a scan and cut and a regular machine, and mm -hmm. you know you can do it for your appliances. So maybe yeah. I'll work something like that out because it really is just taking some simple measurements. But I think that is it is a good idea. Mm -hmm. to but there is a cover it. already made for yeah. it, like we just showed you. Yeah. Um, I don't mind putting a baby lock over my brother because they're basically yes. the same machine. So. 
It doesn't know the difference that the name doesn't say the same. Exactly. Exactly. Well, it's not going to get its feelings hurt, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> and Anne says she really needed to hear this. So those are really good right. advice. Oh, good. And she also uses, um, she covers her machines and uses canned air. Yeah. Just, uh, Don, you would probably caution a little bit with the canned air though, right? That you'd be careful you don't blow anything. Right. You want to blow it away hand. from, um, if you're, if you're trying to blow some like down in your needle area, you can take the covers off that. You want to try and blow it out, not towards in towards your machine. You right. Want to try and blow it out a little bit. Yeah. You can take the bottom covers off of your arm, your lower arm and blow it away from it. Don't blow it into your machine because that's going to just give me more time. I'm going to have to clean more dirt when I get into the middle of your machine. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> And really all the tips that you gave for, for maintaining it yourself are going to prevent you from having to take it in and having, yep. you know, a lot of things. Cause they really are yeah. meant to go and go and go and go without, without mm -hmm. that. And don't forget to update your machines, you know, great you, point. You Deb. Have yeah. to go on, I mean, every even so we often. do it, we go every so often and, get the updates because that's things that then when it doesn't work for you, when you have gotten something, it's because you didn't update it and we're guilty of it because we get busy, but there are times that we actually stop. And if our, if our friend Carl comes over, we, we do it all at one yeah. time. We go from one machine to the next, get them all, uh, updated. get them all updated and then we're good to go for that. But updating is important. Yep. Yeah. Very, very, that. very, very good point. Which <laughs> I understand, Ann. I couldn't do it either, I don't think. But um, uh, king size pillow shams, what a great hey, idea! Hey, you no, know, I can, I can put it with your, with your decor. Yep, Penny says she always forgets the updates. That is such an important point, absolutely. Yes, tell me, you wonder why it's not working. You do the update now, something else works yeah. that's supposed to work. So, yeah, well, Penny, we yep. know that she forgets those updates. We love her, though. We love her. <laughs> yep, I knew that was another uh, uh, Virginia friend there. I figured oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, you know, we're, we're kind of getting ready to, to wrap up here, but um, a lot of the things that you said really uh, just, you know, it, 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 it provides so much joy in the sewing room when, when things yeah. are going well and, you know, going right. And, and we've got um, even those maintenance issues worked out. But so before I let you go, I'll just ask you each um, one last simple question. Um, if I asked you um, what were one or two things uh, that you feel that you could do to make your sewing space a happier place. Now be careful there. I don't want either one of you to say anything about each other, <laughs> but what would, um, what would you think uh, that you could share some ideas of what would make your sewing space uh, a happier place? Put a coffee pot in it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So this isn't where I say, like, put a sheet so we can draw the room in half. No, no, no I told you. No, no, okay. that's off limits. Okay. Um, I don't know. It's, I don't. I, we're pretty happy with we ours. We are. I mean, like, we have, we can have. We the, did grow from a, a shed to a. Right. To a whole room, whole for, room that, so. for that part. You know, I, I love to play. Well, that, would be, that would definitely be a tip, though, to have everything, if possible. It's not possible, everybody, but if you could have everything set up so that you can go in there yep. and turn the machine on and start making something, right? right? And that, Give that, you more room to work. It yeah. keeps you from running around. Like, we have, um, we always have, like, music. I, I, Don and I love to have hymns playing and quiet, whatever, to go. Sometimes we play something else to sing with. But okay. I think that once you can get in into your own little space, your cutting table, your fabrics all lined up and and be listen to me tell him be organized. Huh. Well, that's really something, isn't it? Well, we are partially. We are partially like we do have the fabric set out and we have the threads set up. And when you're organized that way and your own little table and your computer, it doesn't it's not as frustrating to try to go do one thing because you have it all right at your hands. Yeah. And when you get that, that's something, just be thankful. Yeah. Even if you just have a one machine, be thankful you have that one machine that you get to start yeah. with because everything your, has to start somewhere. Count your blessings, right? Yep. Count yep. your blessings. Absolutely. <laughs> I've got, I got to bring up a couple comments here because <laughs> if I don't answer them, they're going to wonder why I didn't. Um, Carla says she loves my scarf. Yeah. And Clovis wanted to know, if it was from my book, yes, this is one of my wrapped and embroidery um, projects. And so is the one behind me. But this is 
the perfect weather just to kind of, you know, wrap yourself up in something and um, take the chill off of there a little bit. There you so go. thank you for the kind, um, for the kind comments on that. She didn't teach us that at the retreat, did she? No, she said, oh. I've got a book. Yeah, that's Use what she it. said. Use they, it. Read the pub, right? Read the pub. Yeah, read no. the pub. <laughs> Well, this has been great. I really appreciate both of you being here. I know you've shared a lot of um, a lot of great uh, stories and a lot of great projects that I know are going to inspire all of our our friends here. Well, so, thank you. Any, thank you for any, having us. Any parting thoughts or parting words before we say goodbye? Happy sewing. Yep, that's right. Happy sewing. So, I'm going to just take a minute to. Um, thank everybody for watching. And if you watched live, thank you for watching live. If you are watching on the replay, thanks for hanging out with us and, um, you know, watching the show. And, uh, you know, we do this the fourth Monday of every month. I bring on someone that uh, has some good sewing information and good sewing um, stories to share. So, and then I'd also invite you to visit letsgosew.com, sign up for updates, um, news, tips, tricks, techniques, um, future shows, all of that good stuff. So Debbie and Don, thank you so much for being here. Oh, Love, you, Joanne. Love you, Joanne. Love you too. And um, we will see you all again. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thanks bye -bye. for coming. So yeah, everybody, thank you for being here. And if you, uh, you know, if you like this, please, um, again, give it a thumbs up, tell your friends and we will meet here again very soon. And until I see you again, I wish you a world full of pretty stitches. Bye-bye. <laughs>